Rajiv, I'd like to ask you a question. There's a gamut of activities that a HR leader needs to address, you know, from raising productivity to diversity and inclusion agenda. Where, what priority would you assign managing multi-generational workforce in the gamut of uh, responsibilities HR leaders have? When we look at India as a country, the demographics today shows that 65% of the population fall under Gen Y and Gen Z, which means that in future, we will have three generations working very closely. Gen X, who are the parents of Gen Z, Gen Y and Gen Z. These people will work together. From HR point of view, to me, when I look at this as a strategy, it has to become a moderate to high strategy for HR leaders to look at working with these three different generations because their aspirations are different, their thought process are different, they're sensitized, they need to be sensitized and oriented around the needs and aspiration aspects of each of these people differently. I want to share one, experience, one more experience which I have gone through in my past experience where a couple of years back, I met a candidate. I was hiring uh, for uh, HR organization and this person was smart. Uh, this girl was very smart, MBA graduate with engineering background. And in, among all the questions which I asked, one of the questions was, where do you see yourself after five years from now? And she was very confident in responding to that question and she told me that I want to be sitting on your seat. Now, and you know, and she said that maybe within this organization or somewhere else. That was a complete sentence. Now, if I would have not been sensitive to the thought process of this generation, probably would I, I would have taken her back and I would have felt that how impractical she is talking. And I would have felt offended also. But this sensitization of understanding that people who are coming on board knew they are very clear about their purpose in, with respect to the career. They're very clear in terms of what do they want. Can I understand that as a leader? And as a HR leaders, actually that's a responsibility which lies in front of all of us to look at this dimension very closely and we need to start sensitizing and orienting all the generations to make sure that we create a culture of coexistence so that everybody is adaptable to that and it's actually helping organization move forward and helping everybody as well. Right. What sort of culture will organizations see and what are your views on uh, organization challenges about that? The first take is that, you know, I think uh, typically uh, what happens is that whenever we make a selection decisions, one of the most commonly asked questions is, does this guy fit into our organization culture? And that actually fits into this idea that normally we look at the company culture as more of a fixed set of variables. There is not much of change something which has evolved over a period of time and that becomes a culture or a metaphor, okay? However, I think I have a different take on this and I would probably say that this is pretty much dynamic and it also depends on the context and the environment where we are operating in. But when you look at uh, the uh, trend when we are seeing that millennials or the subsequent generations are going to be predominantly invading the workforce and probably in the next few years it will be around 60 to 70 percent of the workforce. You have no other options but to look at your organization culture that how do we welcome, how do we fit into their requirements and also I think most important point so far our focus of discussions if you look at or more focused on that okay what are the preferences the newer generations have which way we will accommodate those requirements but we are forgetting the fact that still close to 30 to 40 percent of the populations belongs to the generations of baby boomers gen y or x i keep getting confused as such on this topic and interesting part is that many of them are currently at the leadership positions so for all of us who are in the hr or any other field in the organization development needs to keep in mind that there has to be a balance and if we do not really uh, take into account that balance balancing factor it can be pretty much dangerous so i would say that a good people manager who can provide space provide directions to the employees and allow them to flourish could be something which we should really look for for changing in our culture <coughs> third perspective which naresh briefly talked about is the benefit sets now again we really have to make it more customized that's one of the most important factor we should look forward to because that's something which they would definitely look for because what makes them happy is what is actually you know as per their expectations 
So it does not necessarily mean that we need to really go for a fancy stuff like, you know, open off, not open office is good, but like a gym in your office or something of that sort. But you need to really find out that within your benefit set, how much you can really get to the expectation of your customers. These are some of the things which comes to my mind. And fourth, which is most important, and this generation is very much clear in their thoughts that what do they life, uh, expect in life and what's their purpose. So therefore, if you can engage them in some of the activities where your organization is involved in, and even if your organization is not involved in otherwise also, in some of the social or community work, I guess that really fits into your success rate in terms of retaining the millennials. So that's one to take from. I have a question for Anirudh. Sure. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the, the younger generations wanting to join environmentally responsible organizations, you know, organizations that spend on CSR voluntarily, they're sustainable. Mm -hmm. But, and, and you know, they've often walked away from organizations, they've walked away from jobs that they're in the moment they felt that the organization wasn't doing the best thing for the environment or the society at large. Uh, in my mind, this upends the conventional structure we've had where people work for money, incentives motivate them. Here, mm -hmm. something is going beyond that. So how can organizations respond to, to this? Sure. Uh, good question, Subir. And uh, you know, the whole discussion, when I look at, when, when I think about the millenniums and their expectations and the, their way of looking at things, is the way I look at it is nothing different than what we see from one generation to another. You know, when, when, I, when I look at my kids, their habits are certainly different than what my habits were as a kid. And that has changed, you know, quite frankly. Now, distinctly, we are able to define that for this generation, luckily, or, or whichever we you say. And therefore, we are looking at the attributes, behaviors. And then therefore, we have, we are also looking, taking, you know, trying to take reflections in terms of what needs to change in the organization, right? So that's the context. Coming to your question, I think it's, it's also a question of what, are, what is your priority? You know, perhaps when Gen X, so-called, started, the priority was one is to earn job, second is to get money, Third is to get, you know, decent house, get married, get car, priority. So nobody had time to look, worry about the environment and ethics and this and that, right? Certain things were kind of, uh, you know, uh, for, for, for taken for granted or ignored because your priority orders were very, very different. Now our kids, they have everything. And I'm saying kids because I don't want to really say Jen, why is something else, you know, they're, they're part of our family. So they have everything else in place. So now they're looking for how can they have a better quality of life, you know, at work, in personal life. And they certainly have expectations to bring this country, you know, at a different level. They're much more exposed to the outside world. They are aware about how development, developed countries work. And that's the reason they have expectation. It's no different than my son expects me to drive cars safely, follow all traffic rules, and, 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 and behave. Uh, with, uh, with all, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, following all civic rules. That's exactly the same. And therefore, millennials expects companies to be responsible environmentally, you know, and also from the you know, overall government, governance standpoint. And they have a voice. We have given them opportunity to talk. The only way we can respond is by including them into the whole planning process, by empowering them to make sure that we take this message forward. They're involved in these CSR activities. They're involved into your governance processes and all of that. Just to give an example, in my company, what we do, when we do the corporate governance meetings, it's no more a meeting in a, in a boardroom or in a smaller management group. It's a meeting which is done with our Gen Y and Faces to Watch and youngsters and MBAs because we want them to see what we talk about, you know, governance, and we actually showcase where we are compliant and, and all of that. So, uh, so it's it's true in a way. The only way we can respond, as, we, as you know, to, to your question, as we respond as a parent, being more responsible. That's the way I think organizations shouldn't shy away, and 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 come out in the open and walk the talk and showcase that you know we are we are absolutely there and we are a forward-looking organization. That's my that's my sense. Very helpful. Thank you. Please bring your questions to the panel. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Vara Prasad. I'm from Sintel. Just uh, with the whole millennial talk going and we are talking about three generations working together in the same office. Uh, I'm just, uh, I want to know your views in terms of is it time where we as an HR person, we need to move from a standardized policy to a more fungible policy which will address multi-generations. Uh, I just want to know your views on this. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, I would say time was yesterday, you know, quite frankly. Because, you know, amazingly, and perhaps 
you know, my uh, friends here will agree, amazingly, we don't respond to these kind of things at all. The pace of response from our management side to change things is seriously low. Serious, I wanted to say pathetically, I will say seriously low. We really don't do anything, but a lot needs to change, number one. Number two, our mindset needs to change that HR needs to change policies. I don't think HR really needs to do worry about policies. You know, form a group of all these youngsters, give all your old set of policies and say, guys, please change, come back to us and let us know where, where all we need to change. But that's, that's the top priority item as far as, you know, uh, I'm concerned. For last one decade, with respect to total rewards, we have been talking about having preferential based reward systems, not just from, you know, gender perspective, not just from diversity with respect to generations or other aspects, but it has been talked about. And this is very important because every individual has different needs. Now within, if the cost of service from organization point of view is X value, can you give flexibility to employees to manage that? This is being talked about, debated, and the end result has been that there's a lot of value in doing this. The challenge is why companies have not been able to embrace it a lot, primarily because they fail in the execution. And that requires a lot of automation when you need to manage this kind of things in the organization particularly. And how do you, without automation, you will not have consistency, you will have a lot of challenges to make sure that you provide what you have intended to provide to your people. Otherwise, it is something which is actually needed in the organization context, not just from generation's point of view, but from various segmented aspects of the demographics. So I'm just going to, so we've heard one side of the panel which says, yes, there should be more flexibility. But just to add more flavor to the conversation, I'm going to go to this side of the panel and ask them for their views on the aspects of lawsuits. You know, uh, for example, Netflix famously says, uh, we expect employees to act in the best interest of the organization. There are very, very few policies, if at all. Now what happens is when the startups start encountering lawsuits, union issues, angry employees, so I'll ask the panel to say, how much fungibility is the right kind of flexibility and fungibility? If you are working in a manufacturing setup, and if you have a white collar and the blue collar coexistence in one setup, uh, it's a bit different in terms of just going extra gung-ho about making huge changes in the policies. And when I say that, I'm not being defensive about not making the changes, but we just need to make a balance because, you know, everyone sees. Just to give you a very simple example, you know, yesterday, I went to office and then just as a casual listing, I walked into the canteen and it was around 9.30ish. And uh, if you look at around 30 odd people who are having breakfast and all of them are uh, from our application engineering department. Uh, very young workforce and, you know, I think if I ask them that, what are you doing here? Then obviously the answer would have been is that, okay, we are having breakfast and it's perfectly okay. But now this set of people are being also watched by our group of blue collar workforce who are working in a plant where there is a stringent timeline that nine o'clock you should be there on the line. So how do we balance that? You know, that something is more of sensitizations. So these are some of the challenges which we always day in day out face in the manufacturing segment. And you know, I'm not even going to the lawsuit part of it. It's more of a inequality in terms of the standards or the practices between two sets of people, which throws a different kind of challenges. So that's my perspective on a little different note from what you have just heard. I'm Purnendu Kumar from Piaggio Vehicles. Now what happens when a newcomer joins? He comes with a di different aspiration. Now we being into manufacturing, you know, mindset is different. Many times things move slow. But these people are not accept to, you know, uh, go, uh, you know, go along this, uh, this kind of mindset. So that becomes an issue. And second part of the question is that, uh, you know, they, many of them, they believe in that 9 to 5, 9 to 6 kind of format. They will put in their 100%, but in between also they will go out uh, as uh, one of the panelists, they, he mentioned also that they will go, they'll have breakfast, they'll have tea, and then they come back. And once it's 6, they go, they go home. Many times work requires to go for, you know, stretched hours. We as, you know, managers, we understand that. But it becomes very difficult to convince them that, boss, at times you need to stretch. Because the mindset is like that. I'm not complaining, but this is a serious issue that we face many a time. So I would like if you could just guide me on this, these two areas. I think this is, this is a scenario which is quite rampant in many organizations till recently. Today, the, most of the organizations, we, we complain about the 
stringent labor laws, outdated labor laws in India. But organizations have been able to find out ways to maneuver themselves despite this stringent labor laws in India. I don't think most of the organizations give much credence to what is there in the statute book. So just to answer your question, how a manager actually gets into that kind of a role, it's, it's for HR to be blamed actually. Because you hire some excellent technical guys from the IITs or the NITs, you put them on the shop floor. They're very good in technology. They're very good in terms of handling the equipment. But what we fail to do is, over a period of time, sensitize them on how to handle human beings. So we, we the old carrot and stick methodology, which we normally adopt, that if you work in an, an extra hour, I'll actually pay you overtime. I'll see that you get a better rating, or I'll see that you get the better place to work. So these things are things of the past today. So what is very important today is the relationship it, a manager builds with the immediate team members, whoever they are, whether they are blue collar workers or whether they are uh, the managerial employees, it's the key to success. So I think we need to sensitize our managers in terms of uh, developing these uh, skills, the people management skills. In fact, we launched uh, a program called manager-led development and, 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 and it's not so different from the organization I come from. It's, it's, it's the same scenario, but then you need to have a lot of patience in terms of uh, making the managers understand why it helps to work uh, and develop good relations with the employees. After all, he is also a human being who is working there like any of us. I think th th this is where the key lies, but I will not say that this, I'm not generalizing this across all managers. We, are, we also come across some street smart managers who know how to actually handle people, how to deal with people, and they're always uh, achieving the better results. So I think we, it, it's, it's, it's a journey where we need to sensitize, launch some programs, make them understand how do they actually should be leading the people. This is something which is missing for a long time. Um, uh, hello everyone, my name is Rinki Sharma. My question is uh, mainly connected with retention plans. Uh, we have uh, this three generation which is there in the organization and mainly the inflow of generation uh, Z is huge. So is the retention plan for all th this three generation should be different or we should uh, you know, see everybody in the same uh, parameter? Hello, uh, my name is Nehal and I am responsible for organization development at Adore Digitron Private Limited. Uh, the challenge I'm facing in my organization is there are employees who are 20 to 25 years old in the same organization and there are employees who are coming in new. So there is a schism, you know, that there's a gap between the old and new employees and there's a, there's a, you know, uh, schism and also when, when, you, when it comes to participation or everything and if you really look at the performance of the uh, employees, the initiatives are coming up from the new generation more. So when the initiatives come up from the new generation, uh, you see the gap there. So my basic question is I'm facing a challenge that, uh, because there's a schism between the old and uh, new employees. So how, how do we fill in the gap? You know, I think uh, this is a classic case and I'm, I'm thankful to you that you bring the reality on the table. Interesting uh, observation is that probably some of your 22 to 25 years experience people are also in the leadership positions. So you have an unenviable task of continue to work on them. There is no straightforward answer for these questions. So actually you really need to look at that, this new ideas which are coming, how much of that is making sense for business? And how do you really develop into a business case? This is a very, very difficult job, but you need to continue to harp on this because I can tell you from my experience is that uh, you sometimes need to be shameless in terms of chasing for these ideas. And also one more factor is that my experience says is that if you really have a good business case, leaders listen and act on them. Don't go to someone else that X, Y, Z is saying and therefore I'm working on that. But you need to really create that idea into a situation how it is going to impact business. And if you can get one success story, 
that would help you to tell the new people who are giving you new ideas that next time you bring a new idea, tell me how it is going to help the organization or the business. That will make life easy for you. But there has to be someone who is working as a bridge. So that's my take on this. I think that's, we've I think we are out of time. So uh, I'd like to thank the panelists and the audience for the time for listening patiently to what we had to share. Thank you.